Hey guys, happy Wednesday. So I wanted to go ahead and take a little bit of a break from all of our Punnett squares and stuff like that and talk about something that's interesting, such as genetic disorders. So we're going to do a quick review over karyotypes, and we're going to talk about some of the genetic disorders that karyotypes can show us. So I just wanted to remind you guys that this week is a four-day week. You have Friday off. So I'll go ahead and I'll post up this little video along with your quiz that goes along with this video, and you'll get that completed for this week. So next week, we'll have one more lesson on genetics, and then we'll be starting up with evolution. So in case you don't remember, a karyotype is a chromosome map. So if you're looking at your chromosomes, they're arranged in size as well as banding pattern. So your banding pattern is where your genes are located. So you could see chromosome number one, which is your big chromosome, okay, starts up at the top, and it goes all the way down to chromosome number 22, which are your small chromosomes. And then you have your sex chromosomes, your X and your Y. So for a human karyotype, we say that we have 22 autosomes. So autosomes are non-sex chromosomes. Your sex chromosomes are separate. So those are your X and your Y, and we always place those at the end of our karyotype. So when we're looking at a karyotype, there should be 46 chromosomes for a human. If there are more or there are less, then we know that there's some sort of genetic disorder. The first 22 pairs should also be equal in length, and if not, then we also know that there's some sort of chromosomal mutation. So remember, we should have two copies of each chromosome. If you're missing one, then you have monosomy. That means you only have one chromosome. If you have an extra one, then that means you have trisomy. You have an extra chromosome. So on this karyotype, we can see that this individual has trisomy 21. They have three copies of chromosome 21. We also look at the sex chromosome. If you have more or less than two sex chromosomes, you can also have a genetic disorder. So let's go ahead and talk about some chromosome mutations. So we know in our chromosome, it's all of our DNA that's all wrapped up, and sections of that DNA are what makes our genes. So we can have several different types of chromosomal mutations. You can have a deletion when part of your chromosome is broken off and you've lost that piece. Most deletions are lethal. So if you have uh, an embryo that actually has a deletion in one of their chromosomes, typically they do not survive. We can also have duplication. This is when one or part of your chromosome breaks off and gets reinserted. And so you have an extra copy of those genes. So duplications uh, can be um, you know, non-effective, where because you have those genes, it's not going to do anything. But sometimes duplications can be harmful because then you have too much of that gene. An inversion occurs when a chromosome breaks off, turns around, and reattaches. These are usually fine. Just because you have your copy of your gene there, it's just backwards. Translocation. So translocation is when part of your chromosome breaks off and gets reattached onto a different chromosome. So usually we see translocation when you have severe mutations or when you have something such as cancer. So now let's look at some genetic disorders that our karyotypes can show us. So for example, we talked about trisomy 21. That means that there's three copies of chromosome 21. So if we're talking about their diploid number, they have 47 chromosomes. That's their diploid number. So their haploid number, they would actually have two different haploid numbers. So if you divide 47 by two, you can't have half of a chromosome. So that means that they're going to have two different haploid numbers. We also have cry of the cat. So cry of the cat is when chromosome number five has an upper arm deletion. So if you look at their chromosome number five, you can see that the chromosome on the right is shorter than the chromosome on the left. So cry of the cat actually has several different symptoms. So typically if a baby is born uh, with cry of the cat uh, syndrome, we, they typically born with a cleft palate. So the soft part on the top of the roof of the mouth uh, is not fully formed, and this is actually fairly common. Um, it's a common mutation, not just with cry of the cat. You also have syndactyly. So syndactyly is when 
Uh, you can have multiple fingers or you could have uh, the webbing between the fingers not dissolved so they have less fingers. And then you also have microcephaly. Microcephaly is when the brain uh, area does not develop properly, and so um, the brain doesn't have a proper space to fully develop. And the reason why this is called cry of the cat is because of these mutations. Typically, when a baby is born that has this syndrome and when it's crying, um, it actually sounds like a cat crying. And so that's why we call it cry of the cat. We also have Jacob syndrome. So this is when males receive an extra Y chromosome. So they have 47 chromosomes and are XYY. So remember, just because you have an extra uh, X or Y chromosome, as long as a Y chromosome is present, that individual is male. If there are no Y chromosomes present, then that individual is female. So in this case, the XYY, this individual is male. So people who have Jacob syndrome, they're typically much taller um, and much skinnier than uh, normal developing people. And um, typically it takes them a little bit longer to learn things. But um, that is the, t uh, the syndrome, uh, Jacob syndrome. And the last one we're gonna talk about is Turner syndrome. So Turner syndrome are for f are females that are missing an extra X chromosome. So they only have 45 chromosomes. So remember, I told you guys, as long as there's not a Y chromosome, that individual is female. So she technically only has one X chromosome. And so because of that, because she does not have two X chromosomes, she's not going to show full development um, as a female. So if you look at an individual who has Turner syndrome, typically their neck is very broad. Um, they're usually shorter in stature and uh, they may have extra webbing. So for example, in their neck, in between their fingers, things like that. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe.